Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. I enjoyed my off-the-cuff demo um, in my previous one. I just loved going with the flow and even if mistakes happen, we just embrace them. So I really enjoyed that. So I thought what I'd do is I'd pop by and this is what I've got on my desk. I had to create samples for my new release for Creating Craft TV. And I also created a workshop at the same time. So when, when I'm working on deadlines, I always cut myself some cards, some mats and layers, just so they're all done. So I'd already got these on the desk. So this is Pink Frog Smooth Card, and it's four inches by six inches. So I'm going to use that because it's on my desk. Now I've got two lots of colours on my desk. I'm just going to work with I've got what I've got. I've got these sort of greens and bluey colours here. You can tell what projects I've been doing. And I've also got these colours here. So I'm going to work with what I've got. So I've got a few have I got a few pieces of four by six. I've got a few pieces of four by six, so that's okay. So we'll just work with what we've got. And I'm going to use my new November release. So I'm going to use the Shadowed Heart. I'm going to take that and I instantly know I'm going to need another stamp, so bear with me. Um, where are we? The thing when you're working off the cuff is you don't have anything out. You just literally click the start button on your video and get on with it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use my shadowed heart which is 1062 which i absolutely love and in the previous demo it was sort of in the blues and the greys i'm going to use the colors i've got on here so i'm going to begin with the mustard seed now these are the distress oxide inks so the distress oxide inks you can stamp with them and they work quite nicely the distress inks not so much because they bead because they're translucent these are a pigment diffusion and because they're a pigment diffusion they've got that opaque quality and because they've got that opaque quality you can stamp with them as well which is lovely in the distress sort of range of colors i'm going to use my spice marmalade so just add some of the spiced marmalade and then I'm going to add picked raspberry. Now you have to be aware obviously when you've got the yellows and the pinks that's going to make an orange as well especially if you add the water so you just have to be aware of that. So I've used mustard seed, spice marmalade, picked raspberry, what else have we got? Lumberjack plaid and when I'm sort of going off the cuff what I don't worry about is if I make a bodge. If I make a bodge, I make a bodge. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I'll just start again or cut it up. Now, I'm using the seedless preserves. So, the seedless preserves, if I mix the seedless preserves with orange, I'm going to get brown. But again, I'm not worried about it too much because I'm sort of picking and choosing where I'm adding that seedless preserves. But you need to be aware of this so that, you know, if you get brown, you're not in shock. So you need to be aware of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to spit it out, Tracy. I'm not going to add the water initially. So I'm just adding a little bit more. What am I adding a bit more of? Lumberjack plaid. I told you it was just off the cuff. So I'm just adding a little bit more of the lumberjack plaid. And I might actually stamp at some point. So I'm using the 300 GSM card from Pink Frog with a little bit of a dog hair on there, which just adds to the texture. And I'm just going to place that. Now, you could place it like I did in the previous video on the side, but I'm going to place this in the middle here, like so. Now, when I'm doing these off-the-cuff demos, we might not make a card. We might just waffle and make a few backgrounds. It doesn't matter, off the cuff means that, you know, you go with how you feel. You don't have to create a completed project. You can just create 
background and if they don't work they don't work at the end of the day it's my youtube video my youtube channel so we can create create whatever we want and i wouldn't say that was too bad would you for a background i'd say that is pretty yummy right so let's not waste that ink let's spritz that with a little bit of water which we have got somewhere yes water spritzers are always on my desk so we'll just give that with a spritz one spritz two spritz three spritz so we've got that spritz with water you can see it's shining there with the water now those distress oxides are reactive with water and that's the whole point of them and that's sort of the benefit of them the thing that we love is that they react with water and they allow us to do sort of different techniques they allow us to extend our techniques so that is the second generation print i'm not going to bother with a third generation print you could do that if you wished but i'm not going to bother with a third generation print so we've got our first and our second generation print and it's lovely the second generation print is just as nice as the first generation print just lovely so the problem i have is just deciding what i want to do with them it's just that's the hardest the hardest thing hmm. you see but this uh, where am i now let me just get my mat is already out somewhere yes it is there it goes scissors you see what i do is i tidy up in between each session now if i you can keep this like this if you wish it's entirely up to you but what i'm going to do i think do i do this first yes so what i'm going to do is pierce a hole just through my mat so I've got it picked up like that and then I'm sort of sort of I'm going to try and cut the heart out now this is the second generation print so just sort of make up the shape just so that you've got and the further round you get on the card, the better it will be. It won't be as difficult for you to cut around the more you free up the, the heart. Now, don't forget, it can just be a random shape. Come from underneath as well, if you, if you wish. So come from underneath. Now, I can't even see where the heart is there, so I'm just working that shape out. There we go. So you've sort of got the random heart, which you could, if you wanted, you could place it over the top and you'd have that as well. It's entirely up to you. I think I've made that heart a bit actually fatter than it is. I think I have actually made that heart fatter than it actually is it's actually thinner here but we'll have a look at that in a second what we can do with that but let's work with this one so what i'm thinking you see is i can use this on another card let me show you so what i've done is this heart is actually thinner i've made that one a little bit fatter but when you place it on black card and you raise it a little bit we can do something with that so you're going off the cuff doesn't matter about mistakes you're just going off the cuff um a7 so i'm going to go to my new a7 stamps and i love this little stamp here my little corn flower so i'm going to take my little corn flower which is stamp set 1065 love the little corn flower Oh, I've got a cut on my finger there. Oh, and it's so sore. And it's paper cuts. 
So what I'm going to do then is I've got this cut out of a piece of copier paper just so that it matches the stamp like so. So that matches the stamp quite nicely. Now we don't have to create anything too complicated, not at all. So we'll use that one. Uh, let's have our A7 acrylic block and we'll just bring in the packaging again. I do find myself rather rather dangerous because the minute I move the packaging out of the way, I lose all my bearings and where everything is. I'm just terrible. Let's bring that cornflower back out again. And I will waffle in these. What you can see is you've got one that's more open. You can add a little touch of colour in and you've got one that's more like a silhouette, just so that you can see the difference. This one's got a little bit of text as well. There we go. Where's my... Do you spend as much time as me looking for bits of acetate? Because I do. So I'm going to take this little cornflower and I'm going to stamp in black ink. One advantage of having a small craft room, my excuse anyway, is that one, I can keep it tidy easily. Two, I can just reach my arm over and just reach everything. There are always some advantages to what some people think are a disadvantage. Anyway, that's me thinking on the positive side. So let's just place this over here. And then I'm going to add my little cornflower here. It's a stamp you don't need to press too hard with. And sometimes you have to remember that, that some stamps, if you squish them, too much you actually get rid of some of the detail so you need to be aware to not squish them too much and if you don't get the full stem well you can just draw that in so don't squish it too much and I'll lift that up so you can have a look at that it's just beautiful so we're then going to take the cornflower again and you can see even with a very small stamp although it's not that small it's a good Good size in length. I can't remember, I think it was about three inches, but look at that. It's a really, really good size in length. Turn your floral a little bit so that it works <coughs> a little bit better. You'll have to excuse the frog in my throat. I obviously talk too much. And I've done that many videos over the last few days. I think it's just too much talking. So I'm just adding that there so let's bring let's sort of take this now that is beautiful look at that cornflower those little white touches now if you squish it down too hard you end up hiding those but it doesn't matter you squish it down too hard just add the white bits back in again but doesn't that look lovely just beautiful right let's place that back grab my baby wipe and then I'm going to take this stamp here. Oh, this is one of my favourite ones. Just adore that stamp. So this is the Hosta stamp. I just, I, I absolutely love this stamp. It's been a joy to use and you'll see that from my samples in my release video. So I'm going to use this stamp, but I'm not going to use all of it. So let me just show you. Oh, it's just a gorgeous stamp set. Oh, I just love it. It's lovely when it's stamped. Right, so what I'm going to do is look for the black ink frantically. So there's a couple of words on there. And what I'm going to do is ink the area where it says calm. And what I'm going to do is take a little bit of kitchen roll. And so that it's just more random, I'm just dabbing the black around the edging of the word. Just so that it's a little bit more feathered out if that makes sense and then that's which this should be on an acrylic block now i'll explain just when i've stamped why i need the acrylic block i will explain that so I'm, make sure that's stuck on there i'm going to take this and i'm going to take that little bit of text 
there we go and all i'm going to do is just stamp no i'm not i'm just pressing even where that ink is so just where the sentiment is so i'm just stamping that weird so just allow that just to soak into there and we'll just lift that off there we go and i absolutely love this how you can just add a little bit of that black just from the stamp set my camera's like keep your hands still just so you can see that just adds that little bit of black just to give the the balance it's just lovely and then on the same stamp set the hosta stamp set i've got these little doves so i'm going to see which one i want to use which is going to be that one so I'll just grab an a7 acrylic block and the black just gives the design some oomph i'm just going to take that okay and then i'm going to add this just to here now the doves could quite easily make a christmas card to someone you love card and those dreaded cards we have to make you know when somebody passes away you could also use it for that i know none of us like to make cards like that so we'll just allow that just to absorb into there now the reason i'm allowing it to absorb into there is because it's got that oxide ink underneath and we're going to reach over again add this and we're just going to add a little bit of the white there we go just to the dove just to give it a little bit of those touches of white if you're not happy just go over and add add them again just so that you can see that it just works beautifully doesn't it and it doesn't have to be too complicated you know i'm quite happy with that it doesn't have to have too much detail all the time so let's just place that back you could also add a floral just outside with a 3d element as well but when you place this onto your black mat what kind of black mat what size card is this look at this look let me show you what i've done okay so these pieces of card are four by six. This is obviously the scrap piece that was left over when I cut the cards. Can you see? It's smaller. So I've now got a card that doesn't measure anything. So let's have a look what it measures. Let's have a look. So I'm just going to kneel on the floor and see what this measures. So it measures four inches by... So let's make it five and a half okay so that didn't measure anything so what i've done i've kept the width which is four inches and it measured something biz bizarre so i've measured it as five and a half so i'm going to cut this mat uh four and a quarter by five and three quarters four and a quarter by five and three quarters Okay, so there's a first example for you, working off the cuff. So I'm working off the cuff, and what I've done, if I pick these pieces of cards up, these cards, let me bring these in, are all four by six. And what I've done, because I'm working off the cuff, I've not checked anything, and I've picked this piece of card up, and it doesn't measure four by six. So it now measures four by five and a half, because it just measured anything randomly. In other words, it was a piece of scrap card. So we're now going to make a card from a piece of scrap card. So I've made a mat that that will fit on really nicely. So let's add it to that mat. Oh, and let's reach for the glue again. So don't panic when you suddenly think, just like me, off the cuff, with this random piece of white card. It doesn't matter. Work with it. So let's just...
add that. And let's place that onto a piece of black card. And it makes such a difference just adding it to the black card. Let me just have... I just like to play around with things. Maybe not on that one. But this is what I do. I play around with little bits and pieces. That's that's just me all over. So what I'm going to do is... Do I want to add that cornflower word? So the other thing of working off the cuff is, just for a change, is you put stuff down, keep moving them out of the way under bits of paper and you can't find the damn things. Right, so on here, I've got the word cornflower. So let's take that cornflower word. Take that like a so scrap of card now we really do want a scrap of card so we'll take that cornflower and it's a very it's an a7 stamp the text is very fine so just remember that you just sort of need to hold it on the surface no squishing and pressing down you don't need to do that with the very fine text so let's add that there and we can cut that out like so and without playing around you won't come up with some different ideas you you'll just you know you want you don't want to make create the same thing each time because you want a bit of interest don't you so what I'm going to do then is, what about, let's just see if we have a little bit of black card. I'm not even going to measure. Let me just add a strip of black card. I'm not measuring. Oh, life's too short for measuring in my book. So let's just add this so that it just stays there like that. You don't have to adhere everything the same way each time. So I'm just keeping my finger on there. Hoping my glue will actually come out before Christmas. Let's add that bit of adhesive just there. And don't worry if you squish your adhesive. I'll just press another piece of card on there just to pick up the excess. And it's moved. So we need it to move back. Okay. So I've sort of put this so that the card, the actual black mat, it's it's not straight. It's, it's meant to be like that. So then you want to decide where you're going to put that. I know where I'm going to put that. So let's add a little bit of adhesive. Now, when you're doing any card or any make, you know, work is subjective. You know, everybody sees something in a different way. Everybody places things in a different manner. I'm going to add mine there, like so. That's it. Now, apart from the sentiment, there is no dimension on here. It is all flat. But I've added my sentiment, just not the actual word. So let's just... The actual word itself, you actually want straight. That's it. Let's just, let me just use my scissors. Push that up there a little bit. Yes, I'm that fussy. That's it. Just so that you've got the cornflower word on there. So we've just got that on there. And it is flat. So now I've got some five by seven inch card blanks. So I can add this to my five by seven inch card blank. And it's up to you whether you add it straight to this edge here. Let me show you. So that's going right to that edge there. Or you can put it in the centre, whichever makes you happy. Sometimes I place them on the edge like that because it just gives them 
a different look and on this occasion we'll add it on the center here there we go and there doesn't always have to be lots of things on there you can use your stamps just as is with no cutting out if you want what i'm trying to show you is lots of different ideas so that we enjoy our products and when you've got some time over christmas you know and, and it's dull outside or you're feeling a bit flat just get those stamps out and create a project and if you don't want to send it to somebody add it to your journal and you can look back at it the amount of times i look back at things and they bring me so much joy but doesn't that look lovely a bit of ink one sentiment and just done just playing around with the stamps right let's have a look at this one where i made a little bit i'd say i made a little bit of a botch there because i made the heart a little bit fatter than it was but hey ho what does it matter right so first of all let's grab our mat so this is our mat and layer now is this four by this doesn't look like this is four by six this looks like i've picked up two random pieces of card let me check again i think i have bear with me so this is four by oh yes we've picked up some random pieces of card you can just rely on me and there we go so we want four and a quarter by three quarters what am i like so again what i've done is i've picked up the waste when i when i was cutting my four by six inch pieces of card what i've done is i picked up the waist not the f not the actual four by six inch pieces of card don't matter it's four by five and a half just like this one was this is what happens when you go with the flow it doesn't matter but because i can see the black through there what i'm going to do let's take um First of all, let's put that one back because I'll end up with stuff everywhere. Um, so I'm going to take this stamp here with some of that text on, which is the one with like the little tiny silhouette poppy. So I want the text. Now, my thinking here is on this one, you've got, I'm going to have this black showing through. So. I'm going to add, just so that it looks like it was all planned, I'm going to take the text stamp and I'm going to add some of the black text just around the heart, just so it looks like it was planned. When me and you know, there was no plan at all. So just going to add... A little bit more text going around this heart i'll worry about cleaning up afterwards and the reason i'm adding this black is i want it to echo the black that's going to be in the background on the heart so i'm using my nocturne ink just to add some stamping just around that heart now you don't have to make if you if you can't help it and for you it has to be regimented and you have to have some round this side as well that's fine i'm just going to leave it with just on this side so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to take my pin flare glue let's have a look at this and am i yes you are tracy so we're going to add some blobs of my pin flare glue just to add some, just to make sure it, it's stable. And I'm going to add that to the black mat. So that's going to be added to the black mat, like so. Okay, stop saying okay. All right, let me just, you see, and it started raining here, which is just typical. Now, don't, we don't want any of that 
adhesive showing so always make sure that your card looks professional you don't want any adhesive showing so let me just press that down a little that's it just removing a little bit so we don't see that adhesive so i'm going to pick this up i can just move that just so that that is correct on there and you can see that it's got that dimension okay so i've then got my heart that i can add here and then we'll add our little bit of black stamping to this heart around here just so it looks like it's all coordinated and it's all been worked together so let's just add so i'm just adding little bits of this text and it works quite nicely because this text is not bulky sometimes you don't need sort of a bulky text let's bring in a little now when i'm messing with stamps i always make sure i've got a little bit of a wipe here just so that so what i'm going to do then is i'm going to go around the heart just with my black Posca pen. Now, you know I always do this usually on a piece of card, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going around the heart. There we go. So let's just add a little bit more. There we go. So I'm just going to put that on one side just so that can dry just for a few seconds and mop up this because he'll smear it everywhere. And I then don't tend to use that wipe again when I've got the black on there. It's just, that's just me. I don't like to do that. So what I'm going to do then is pick up my stamp set 1066, that little poppy type stamp. And then we'll take our black ink Just give that a good inking. And then you'll often see me sort of do this because I'm deciding where I want it to go. So I'm going to add that there. And the black stamping is going to echo the black that's here. So I'm just working with what I've got, even with a botched little bit where I cut the heart fatter than it actually is on the stamp. But what does it matter? Not at all. So this beautiful stamp works beautifully on there. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So I'm picking that stamp up. Any normal person would wait until the stamp was dry, but no, not me. So we're just going to add a little bit of white. It's always best if you let the ink dry because you'll get that white on there far, far better. There we go. So let's show you that just so you can see that. Let me move this out of the way. And that I'm going to sort of have here like this. It's going to have some dimension. So let's grab our pin flare. Let's just make sure we push all that up. I think I need some more pin flare. I think I've got one left. And I'm going to add, let me have a look now. So on that side, I'm going to make sure that all the pin flare is on that side, just so that that side is raised. There we go. Now I'm making something from nothing. And what happens to me is when I'm, when I'm creating, if I quite like how something's going, I get all engrossed. And what that means is then I'm all interested in cutting bits out. So you can see, if you didn't want to add anything else and just wanted to add a sentiment, you could do that, especially if you like something that is a little more pared back. However, 
when I was cutting this card, this is from the top of here because this card, Tracy picked up the wrong piece of card because this is four by five and a half now. So that the mat is four and a quarter by five and three quarters rather than what I'd planned. So what I'm going to do is just add this here and I'll show you why. So we'll just add some pin flare. Now let me just think where I'm adding the pin flare. I'm just going to add that yeah, around about there. So I'm just going to add a dollop of pin flare there. Like so. And obviously I'm working with something that is soaking wet. No, I can't expect it to. Yeah, so I've just placed that on there. And this is what I do at home. I've instantly realised I'm going to need a bit of pin flare at either edge to give balance. So let's just press that on there. Just make sure, don't squish it out, you sort of a gentle touch. Let's lift this up just so that it, it makes contact. Just so that you've got that on there. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to have a little bit of fun. Let's have a look. So I'm now going to look at my Versafine Claire ink. So I've got my black and I should have a purple in here somewhere. And there it is, Purple Delight. So we're going to need some scraps of card and we've got plenty of those. So let's grab some scraps of card. Now you don't have to do this. You can pair yours back if you want. But again, I'm enjoying myself. So I'm going to just carry on with the flow. I'm going to take this. I'm then going to... So I've showed you one that's more paired back because the one, the, the first card we made didn't take very long at all and it was just stamping and it was only the sentiment that had got any 3D on it. So I've inked all that in the Purple Delight. I'm then going to take my black, my Nocturne, and just sort of go over the stems. It doesn't matter if you touch a bit of the flower, not a problem. And then going to stamp that onto my card, like so. Oh yes, lovely, lovely, lovely. Look how it looks. I just love it. So I'm then going to take that purple delight again. Then I'm going to take my Nocturne Black and add a little bit of the black. This time maybe touching a couple of the petals on purpose. So let's just add that. There we go. Let's just cut this up because Tracy doesn't like working with a big piece of card. Now these videos are naturally going to be longer, mainly because I'm not doing any prep, so they're bound to be longer. So I'm just cutting these pieces of card just so that they're not, it just makes it easier to cut out. Now let's just have one in plain black. Now, you don't have to do this. You don't have to add this, these little twiddly bits that I'm going to add, but I'm addicted to it and I like doing it. There's a lovely little grass stamp on this, on this one, on 1066. This lovely little grass stamp, especially if you're doing meadow stamping, it just works beautifully. Right, look at my hands. They're not exactly clean. So take a few moments before you touch any card and just make sure my hands are clean, which they are definitely not. There we go. Let's cut that piece of card down. Just makes it easier for me. 
Now this card I am losing myself with because I'm enjoying the process and I'm enjoying fiddling. It's my, my favourite thing to do. So you'll just have to sort of humour me. So I'm going to cut around these and just have a little white border. And the good thing about my YouTube channel is I don't feel rushed. I don't feel like I'm under pressure. The minute you feel like you're under pressure, well, your projects are affected. You want to be able to enjoy that process. And for me, that's what my YouTube channel is about. It's about educating, but it's also just my place to waffle, chat, reconnect with you. It's just my, my happy place. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting out little twiggly bits. And I'm cutting out all different. So we're going to cut down here. Like so. So I've got this little twiggly bit here. Just so you can see that. So you can see. So I'm just cutting out some of these twiddly bits. So we're going to cut out, and again, I'm just leaving a white border. Now, don't think about which twiddly bits you, you're going to cut out. Just go for it. Go, go for it. Don't think about it too much. Cut some single stems. Cut some double. Just mess around with it and each time maybe cut out something a little bit different each time and it's hilarious because I've got we had tree surgeons in I've got a few trees in the garden and they often need cutting back um, each year so he's just turned up of course he's turned up when I'm doing a video of course he has you know, if I did a video at seven in the morning, they'd turn up then. So this is what off, off the cuff means. It means you're part of Tracy's life, whatever comes my way. So let's just cut that out. And if you cut them out all differently, they're sort of at different angles. So it works quite nicely. Just take your time. Now I've shown you that you can you can leave your project as is. You can leave it. Now I can't pick it up. Let me just grab there. You can leave it if you wish like that with a little sentiment on and just leave it like that. No problem at all. I'm not. You should know me by now. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. So I'm cutting out these little twiddly bits so each time just cut out something different so what I mean by that is cut out different lengths so if you've got a few quite long pieces then just cut out some short pieces there we go so on that one Let's just cut out that one single one because sometimes you need just ones. Now you can see, and you, the good thing about this is you don't need to cut out perfectly by any stretch of the imagination. So let's cut this one out. And what I'd say is grab yourself a cup of tea and spend 10 minutes just cutting the twiddly bits out. When you see it finished, it's then it's then worth it and make them make them different lengths so I'm cutting out my little my twiddly bits just from the composition I've got an itchy head like you do when you're cutting out so sometimes we can think 
oh no, we've made a mistake and it instantly goes in the bin. But sometimes those mistakes can sometimes make the best cards. So let's just cut around this. I love the shape of these. Let's just cut that out. And we'll have three on this one. Just cut that out. And then we'll cut down here. There we go. So you can see I've got a few nice twiddly bits I'm making up here. And I'm not wasting any of them that I've stamped. It's part of the fun. So let's just cut these out. And cut some that are a little bit shorter, like that. And you can see that's curved, so it's a little bit shorter. And seriously, this is not complicated. But if it stresses you out, don't do it. Do something else, just keep it plain. For me, this I find therapeutic. I also love it when it all comes together. So I've used all those pieces from there. And then I've got the black that's going to give me some contrast. black out just so that those give me some contrast but also echo the black that is showing through the aperture which is rather nice and what you have to remember is that was a second generation stamping that sometimes we don't do anything with and sometimes that second generation is the best so let's just that out so I'm making this one a little bit longer and because I've got this I've got um, pin flare glue at the back of there that's that will also capture some of the florals so I'll make this a bit longer so now I've got a twiddly bit, just, there we go, got a twiddly bit in black. So let's add this. And just turn, I do like this little one here. You could add, let me show you, let me just, I start waffling and then I'm like, oh, let me show you. Let me just cut that out. I know this sounds mad. But even that, just added to a project, would just work really nicely. Just love these little twiddly bits. And it's funny, you design stamps and it doesn't matter how many times I look at them, I plan, I think, oh yes, it could be used for this. Oh yes, it could be used for this. I'm always then, every single time, surprised when the stamps arrive just how much more I can do with them than first thought. Because when you stamp them and you start creating, more ideas start flowing. And that's the whole advantage for me of stamps. I love stamps that don't date. I love stamps that you can use year in, year out, whether it's 2023 or 2050. I just love that you can use them whenever. So let's have another little one. And cut around that. There we go. So I've used all those, I haven't used, I've cut out all those little twiddly bits 
just so I can use them. So what I'm going to do now, the only thing I'm going to do is adhere the stem. I'm not thinking about which ones I pick up, I'm just picking them up. So I'm not adhering the petal, I'm just adhering glue on the stem. And then I'm going to push that down and it will catch some of that pin flare. And if it doesn't, it will stick because I've added some adhesive to the stem. And just bend the petal just so it sticks up a little bit. So I've got a little bit of a, a black one here. So we'll just add a little bit of adhesive to there. Again, I'm not going to add any to the floral. Now I can feel the pin flare in there because I can feel it pushing into the pin flare. I'm just going to leave that like that. So I need, have we got a long purplish one? Yeah. So again, just to add the adhesive to the stem. And then I'm going to add, you know by now, I love faffing. So let's take this board here, just so that goes over there. There we go. So the petals, when I'm doing it this way, because I'm only adhering the adhesive just on the stem, the actual little florals stick up, which really appeals to me. So we'll just add that one there. So it makes it look more, I don't know, it's just more pleasing to the eye if the flowers just stick up a little bit. It doesn't half make me happy, this does. So let's take this little tiddly one just add a little bit there. Just add this down here. Let's make sure that that definitely touches the card so it doesn't fall out and it, it does stick down. So I have that. Just pressing on there. There we go. So we have one of the little black ones well it's a nice tall black one and then we'll add this just just going down here just honestly i could i honestly i could lose myself i often do lose myself so i've got that black one so that can go that side it's just my favourite thing to do. Might not be your favourite thing to do, but that doesn't matter because you do what makes you happy. And you can see the heart is moving a little bit. That's only because I've used pin flare. And I'm not going to waste any of these little, little bits. Not a chance. Let's add that there. I can feel that going into the pin flare. What have I got left? I think they might be all purple. Oh no, there's a little black one there, which I'll save to the end. Little purple. There we go. Let's pick that one up. Let's add some going this way. Oh, I love it. I absolutely adore this. Right. Let's just take that. I keep going to press the pin flare on here rather than my actual floral. Just make sure that you don't flatten the heart. I really am enjoying myself. And I think sometimes going with the flow can be so much fun. And if, if you said to me, pick your favourite stamp before the stamps go live, I can guarantee you, 
it changes by the time I've made projects. Every single time. When I've made projects, it changes and it can change by the week. It is just me all over. Now let me show you this. Let me lift this up. Look at that. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love that. Now you could have left it paired back if you want, but I just love that. Absolutely love that. What I'm going to do then, oh, I've got my itch, 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 itch. So I'm then going to take my scarecrow stamp and I'm going to ink my scarecrow because I adore him too. Let's grab my border stamp acrylic block. And this is why I end up with 3,000 things everywhere. Scrap of card. I adore him. I adore him. There we go. So you can leave it like that if you wish. No problem at all. Just leave it as it is if that's what you want. Just take our scarecrow. Just lovely. He is ace. Again, just going to wipe my fingers because I'm forever touching stamps. So I'm just going to push my chair in. Mainly because I need a better quality chair. Oh, it makes me backache. So I'm just cutting him out and I'm just leaving a little white border. I've now got an itchy face. Why does it always happen when you are cutting out? Now you don't have to cut his little fingers out if you don't want his little straw fingers. Don't get hung up about it. Just hide them if you don't want to cut them off and hide them in with the foliage. I love doing it. It's all part of it for me. There we go. I've cut a little bit of his straggly bits out. There's a little mouse on there. Let's cut that little mouse out. You don't have to have the little mouse if you don't wish. Just cut that out. And as you're cutting out, make his neck a little bit wider. It makes it a little bit easier for you to cut out. And I just go in and out, in and out, just to give him some straggly edges. There we go. Now, I might not use this, but it doesn't matter. It's all part of playing. Let's get rid of that, this card, because I can't be doing that. That's it. Just go around. It's little scraggy straw hat sticking out. When you can, try not to, try to turn your card, but try not to touch the black ink. We had to call the tree surgeon back because I said that I wanted more cut off. We'll see whether he can do it or not. And then when we've had these high winds, it's scary, isn't it, when the trees are blowing and you're just thinking, is that is that branch going to fall in half? So let's just cut that out. Now, for the bottom, I just sort of go up and down just to look like he's got some scraggy clothes on. Obviously, he's got a little pole there, but if I'm going to tuck him in, I don't really need to keep the pole, but I don't know. And when you don't know, just cut the pole out anyway, because you can just get rid of that if you don't want it. So to make his clothes scraggy, just go up and down. But I might not see that anyway, depending where I tuck. 
where I took him. There we go. I adore, I adore him. I just adore him. Now, let me just... Or do I want him? You're going to have to bear with me because Tracy is a pain. So do I want him there lifted up? Or do I want him here? Lifted up just on the edge. Mm. I, I like him here. I always, honest to God, I, you can't plan it, but I always want him in the most awkward position. Trust me, I do it every time. So, I want you to... Oh, you won't be able to, will you? I'm now talking to paper flowers, for goodness sake. So, let me just bring you round. No, I don't want you on his face. I, honestly, you can't... I'm terrible. I always want the card in the most... Sh the, the bits in the most stupidest places. I want him there. Right. So I'm then going to add a sentiment. Oh, and I've put them away. So I'm just grabbing my ephemera. Again, something I love playing with is ephemera. So can't be bothered with faffing through little bits just pull the whole lot out and have have a little play so just for you there's just for you thank you hugs beauty dream flower spring memories imagine so you could have imagine there which works rather nicely so we may have imagine you can just have some numbers what else have we got I've got happy good luck one of a kind now that is perfect right let's take all these now place these in here got this little circular heart as well I might use. So within the ephemera there is some little hearts as well like this one that's in the ephemera as well. See I love it I've got loads of little bits now I can play with just creating. Oh I've got an itchy face I don't know what's up with me. Now let's just pick these up and it will take me longer to pick the ephemera up to put it back than it will to create the whole card. There we go. So I can add this one of a kind here. Let's take that one of a kind. Now I've got the dimension with the strip of card I placed on there. So I'll add that one of a kind. And you can see I'm very gentle because obviously I've got that pin flare glue underneath. I've then got this little heart that I'm just going, I'm going to put it there. I'm going, no, it's going to go there. So we just add my ephemera just here that'll bring the white from the outside of the card to the inside of that heart there we go we'll then add some white splatters and we need to add white splatters to our previous card so we're just going to add some white splatters Turn your card around, turn it again, just so you get some different areas. You obviously don't want the text to get any. And then let's just bring in this card. 
that we created and let's add a few white splatters to that so that this this was your card that i created first that's totally flat apart from the sentiment and we need to add a bit of shading and then this is the other one so these are both off the cuff with pieces of card that I thought was four by six that wasn't even four by six. What am I like? So what's happened to Tracy's kitchen room? There we go. That's just, and you can see I'm sort of picking this up very gently because I don't want to flatten it. I'm then going to add that to a five by seven inch card blank. So let's take the five by seven inch card blank we're just going to add that now it's always best as I say almost in every video to wait until everything is dry rather than push your look with bits that are not dry so I'm going to add that to a five by seven inch card blank like so just spend a little bit of time I've not pressed it down yet and I'm just going to press down sort of with my scissors mainly because this has got pin flare on because what you would do if you were a normal person and not working off the cuff you could have added the black mat first to your card blank and then added this bit on the top so what I'm going to do then is gel pen. Tracy always puts these things away. Oh, I didn't. I've got it here somewhere. No, it's on the desk. So Tracy gets up for nothing. So I've got the gel pen. We'll just see if this works. And then I'll just turn this around so I can reach. I'm going to add a little bit to the heart. And I'm going to add... Now, if you were sensible, you'd add these white touches when you've just cut them out. But the reason I'm adding them now is I can see which flowers are on display and need those white touches. So I'm just adding the white touches. Just gorgeous, absolutely adore that. Now, when I'm looking at this, let me just go grab it. When I'm looking at this card, which is almost complete, I can see that, um, let me just see, that just needs a little bit of black. So what I'm going to do is I'm using my washi that is called a round, hash 44. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that black washi, just to the top here to give a little bit of balance and if you lift that up now I absolutely adore that I absolutely adore it I just love it oh, I just love that and it was a piece of card that was the wrong size so just brilliant I absolutely love it now it's up to you whether you want to pair them back or add more it's entirely up to you so what you've got is you've got your card that's only got one bit of dimension with the sentiment. Nothing, everything else is flat. And then you've got our dimensional one that we even cut wrong. Not we, the royal we, me, that cut, I cut wrong and we made it work. The only thing I need to do now is let's move that card out of the way. Let's bring this card in. We just need to add a little bit of shading just around the dove and just below our sentiment. Now, you need to be aware that we've got that oxide underneath there. And what does it do? It reacts with water. First of all, I need to make sure my brush is clean. So that oxide underneath reacts with water. And what I'm going to do now is try and react to add the shading underneath. So the best thing to do is make sure that you've got the excess moisture off your brush and then just lightly tickle. Just lightly tickle 
to add a bit of shading. Just a little bit of tickling, just around the dove, just to give a little bit of that shading. Right, let's lift that up and that just finishes your card off. So let's bring those in to off the cuff cards for you. So I hope you've enjoyed those. Let me just show you the dimension, just so that you can see that. If you can see the dimension. So I hope you've enjoyed those cards. I've thoroughly enjoyed them and I hope it inspires you. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.